Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna film a little get ready with me and we're gonna chat about where we're at for my goals and resolutions and habits for 2024. And we're gonna talk about my winter arc to carry me through to the end of this year. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So I'm gonna start with my skin prep. I've been going super simple with my skincare routine lately just because I've been having a lot of trouble with my acne. So all I'm gonna do is go in with my Mugwort Calming Ampoule by Essentry and my Charlotte Tilbury Magic Cream, of course. I'm going to attempt to walk you guys through everything that I'm doing with my makeup in terms of like the products that I'm using, but because we're mostly just gonna be chatting today, if I miss telling you guys something that I used on my face, I will have links to everything in the description box down below. So I'm gonna start with my base today. We're gonna to go in with the Lancome Tint All Ultra Wear Foundation. I've been wearing this like every day. So what is a winter arc? I've been seeing this as a social media trend a lot over the last few weeks and I've been like kind of annoyed by it, but then I actually found out what it was. <laughs> And I was like, oh, okay, I feel like I can get behind that as like an idea and a trend. I was taking it too literally and thinking of like an arc in fiction. So like a literary arc and a winter arc would be like something that happens in a story over the winter period, which is kind of the idea behind the social media version of the winter arc. But basically, the idea of the winter arc is to use the shorter, darker, colder days as a time to refocus yourself, a time to focus on self-improvement and goals. For me, that's gonna be looking back at the goals that I set for myself at the beginning of this year, checking in with where we're at. When I'm filming this video, it's November 25th, so we have just over a month for me to complete any of the goals that I had set for myself earlier this year. So I feel like it's a great time to just look in at everything and see what we can accomplish by the end of the year. If you didn't set any New Year's resolutions or if you've already accomplished them, you can use your winter arc as a time to get ahead on the new year so that you're not just going into the end of 2024 and kind of letting go of all of your goals and ambitions and hoping to start everything again on January 1st. You're going through this final period of the year really like strong, motivated, dedicated, and you're giving yourself a head start on 2025. If anything, it's just a great time to refocus on your goals and maintain your habits. So I've filmed two videos for my goals and resolutions for 2024 already this year. I did my original video where I told you guys all about everything that I wanted to do for the year. And then in June, I did a six month kind of halfway check-in. So I'm gonna give some updates on where we're at for the year so far. I'm just going in with a little bit of concealer. I'm using the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Sculpting Concealer and the Makeup by Mario Surreal Skin Concealer uh, just to mix and match for the proper shades on the different areas of my face. So my word for the year of 2024 was routine. I was absolutely desperate at the beginning of this year to get into a solid routine with a few different areas in particular in my life. With my job running my own business, I didn't feel like I had enough discipline in order to accomplish things that I wanted to accomplish, both in my work and in my everyday kind of day-to-day -day life. And so I felt like having a routine was gonna help me with some of that discipline and help me to achieve some of the goals that I wanted to achieve in all the different areas of my life. So overall, in terms of setting myself up with routines, I feel like I have done a really amazing job at that. I'm so much more at peace with myself and the way that I'm spending my hours in the day. My scrolling and my YouTube consumption during the daytime, like work hours, has gone way down. I'm way more focused on the things that are important to me and I have more clear ideas about what I have going on, what I want to do next and I feel like that's all due to the different routines that I have going on in my life. 
I've definitely been better at some than others. I set out to have daily, weekly, and monthly goals this year, and what I've found over the course of the last 11 months is that my daily routines have been so much easier to get into and maintain than the weekly and monthly goals. I would say the weekly goals have been kind of second best in terms of me actually following through on them, and then the monthly ones have been absolutely the worst. And that totally makes sense, right? Because you're focusing in on your daily goals on a daily basis and you're repeating them often. And so they become more of a routine, they become more of a habit. And as you start to spread out those different habits, they're gonna be less and less likely to be formed the less and less often you're doing them. So it totally makes sense how things have kind of played out over the year. And when I go into 2025 and I'm setting my new goals for 2025, I'm definitely going to be considering that uh, when I'm setting those goals so that I can be more realistic about how to get certain things done. So for example, my daily routines in terms of my fitness routine and my work routines have been so, so successful. Um, having certain days of the week where I'm doing certain things, whether that's my really specific workout split or the schedule that I set up for myself in terms of work. So for example, on Mondays I'm planning and filming and grocery shopping. On Tuesdays I'm meal prepping. On Wednesdays, I'm editing. On Thursdays, it's a full freelance focused day in terms of working on social media, working on advertising, working on my website, sending out any emails that I've been putting off, etc, etc. Having specific days for specific things has worked out so, so well for me. One thing that didn't work for me in terms of the specific days for specific things was a cleaning schedule. So I wanted to clean certain things on certain days and it just wasn't successful for me really at all. The only thing that I managed to keep up with for the majority of the year was the bathroom. So I was cleaning the bathroom every second Wednesday and I was really sticking to that. I think when I did my checkup in June, I was saying like I had kind of maybe fallen off of that did I? And I wanted to get back into it and I did get back into it. So I'd say for the majority of the year, that's really the only like specific cleaning schedule that I kept to. I'm back to using the Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk palette like every single day. <laughs> I took such a long break from using this palette, but I think this is like my fourth day in a row reaching for it. It's just so easy and thoughtless. I don't have to really think about what I'm doing, and it always turns out like just a nice kind of natural eyeshadow look. I've been really back into eyeshadow during kind of the summer and fall. I was not really loving eyeshadow as much. I just like wasn't enjoying taking the time to do it, but in the winter time, I feel like I have a little bit more time, and I've just been back into eyeshadow, and this palette has been a favorite of mine just really recently so I'm just gonna reach for this again I had some quarterly cleaning goals that I didn't do at all like I wanted to clean out my fridge once a quarter I haven't done that at all this year literally since I did that big fridge clean out in a vlog I haven't done anything similar to that at all this year and just some other things that I had wanted to do on a more regular basis just didn't get done so I'm gonna have to reevaluate that because obviously those are still things that I want to improve on in my life but the quarterly weekly doing the same thing at certain times of the year practice with cleaning just yeah it didn't work for me this year Something that I find a lot of success in, in terms of keeping the house tidy, is a 10 minute tidy at the end of the night. In our house, I do pretty much all of the cooking, and so Will does majority of the dishes. And something that we've both been working on over the last few years, I would say, is cleaning up the kitchen and doing all of the dishes after we eat dinner. Will's really good about doing the dishes during the day, but we used to always leave the dishes after dinner and he would wash them first thing in the morning instead. And then we had some pest problems in our old apartment and we immediately <laughs> switched things up and would do the dishes literally as soon as we finished eating every single meal in order to try and help with the issue that we were having. And then when we moved to our new apartment, the one that we're currently in a couple of years ago, we kind of started falling back into our old habit of 
cleaning the kitchen in the morning. Cleaning the kitchen after like every meal and especially after dinner was something that we both really liked. It's so nice to wake up to a clean kitchen and yeah, it just felt very, I don't know, adult and like something we both really wanted for our living space, especially since we're in such a small space. Our kitchen is literally visible from like every room in the house. So if it's dirty, it's really going to impact the way that you're feeling about the entire apartment in general. So something that we started to really focus on um, over the last couple of years was... Yeah, just cleaning the kitchen every day after dinner and Will's been really good about that. He does it most nights and something that I go through phases of is when he is cleaning the kitchen, I'll do like a little 10 minute tidy because it usually only takes him around 10 minutes to, the, to do the dishes. And so during that time, there's other things I can do like pick things up around the house, like wipe things down, dust, like whatever needs to be kind of tidied up in the house. And I find that really, 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 really effective, but I get kind of lazy with the 10 minute tidy. So I had put the 10 minute tidy on my goals for this year and I would say majority of the time I'm not doing it because I kind of get in my head about it and I'm tired and it's after dinner and I spent, you know, like an hour making dinner and so I just want to relax while Will is cleaning the kitchen, but it's also important to me to have a clean and tidy space, so I want to prioritize that 10 minute tidy a little bit more and especially as we go into our winter arc as we finish out this year I feel like that's something where normally at this time of year I would say yeah I'll add that to my 2025 goals is to work on that next year but I'm gonna try and incorporate that into the end of this year to just help kind of carry through into January a little bit stronger so when it comes to some of the other goals that I had for this year, so besides physical activity and working out and exercising, two of the things that I wanted to focus on this year were healthy eating and drinking less alcohol. And honestly, for the last probably, I don't know, 10 years, maybe eight years, uh, Will and I have been really into like nutrition. We've watched a lot of food documentaries and Will's really big on personal development. So we've kind of explored together a lot of the different personal development spaces and nutrition and healthy eating is definitely a big one. So focusing on whole foods and eating a wide range of plant foods on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis is something that's kind of always been important to me, but I wanted to focus in on it a little bit harder this year. I've always been quite good with breakfast and dinner, but in past years, lunches has been something where I've kind of left room for improvement. I've often reached for quick meals like dumplings or pierogies. When it gets to the middle of the day, I just want something quick and easy. And those types of quick less nutritious foods are often something that is just you know easier to reach for and when you're hungry and just ready to eat your decision making is not as powerful as you would hope it to be and so you can kind of fall into eating those types of foods so the goal that i had set for myself in terms of healthy eating this year was to do more meal prepping for lunches specifically so this is something that i would say i have definitely improved on this year but still has room for improvement by the way, I'm just going in with a little bit of the Maybelline Gel Liner in brown. This liner is really dry. It's definitely drying out on me, so I've been trying to use it like every day until it's basically like unusable. We're definitely getting to that point. I've had some pretty janky eyeliner trying to make it work. <laughs> Um, but I just am the type of person who cannot just like throw things away until it is absolutely necessary So yeah trying to use it up, but my eyeliner might be a little bit off because yeah It's just a little bit more difficult to work with. Yeah, so I'd say for about probably maybe half the year Maybe a little bit less I have been really focused on meal prepping I definitely was doing a better job of it in the first half of the year compared to the last half of the year this is another thing that I definitely feel like I can lock in for the next month and just get back into for the next like four weeks until 2025 I love having really nutrient-dense delicious home-cooked lunches just ready to go in the fridge 
it makes me so happy. It makes me feel so healthy. It's helping me achieve just the health goals that I have for myself. And yeah, I, I'm doing okay. But when you're trying to introduce something like completely new into your life like that, you can definitely take a little bit of time and practice to make it a true habit. I feel like that's an important tip for people who are getting into fitness and like wanting to go to the gym or do workout classes or get into running or anything like that if that's on your goals for the year. Like fitness and a workout routine is something that has been in my life for what feels like my entire life. Like I played sports since I was like a toddler and started working out and going to the gym in like junior high. So I've had so many years of practice incorporating fitness into my lifestyle that it wasn't until like my late 20s that I was actually able to have it just feel like it was a part of my lifestyle. And so if you see people online who are like, yeah, I made fitness part of my lifestyle, just remember that it's something that they have likely been working on for many, many years. And if that's like one of your goals for the year, even if you have periods where you're super dedicated, super committed to your fitness, and then other periods where you're not at all, the more times that you go back to it, the more times that you go back to something, the more times that you go back to anything, the more it's gonna solidify and set itself into your life and into your lifestyle. So yeah, that's something I've learned personally from personal experience and I'm gonna carry that forward when it comes to meal prepping healthy lunches. Alcohol, you guys, alcohol is a big one. I feel like it's actually kind of trendy to be I don't know, sober or at least like sober curious right now, which is so interesting to me because when I was a teenager, <laughs> the trend was literally the exact opposite. The trend was sneaking out, drinking as much alcohol as you could get your hands on, drinking hard, drinking a lot. And I was that way for many years. And don't get me wrong, I still love to have a few beverages and as I've been reducing my alcohol intake, I'm finding out so many things about myself and the way that I socialize. Now that I've been drinking like way, 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 way less, my alcohol consumption is down so much compared to even last year when it was also a goal for me to be drinking less. In social situations, I am the type of person who is drained by them and needs alone time to recover my social battery as opposed to some people who are of the personality that are charged by being in social situations. And I'm finding that my social battery is running out so much quicker in social situations than it used to when I would be drinking a lot of alcohol in those same social situations. I'm finding myself just ready to go home earlier than I ever have been before. Just having lower energy at social situations in general and it really kind of changed the way that I interact in a lot of different situations and I don't know it's just it's interesting it's something I'm learning about myself slowly as I'm gradually reducing and reducing the amount of alcohol that I'm taking in. I'm also getting older, like I'm turning 35 so soon, and even the smallest bits of alcohol are affecting me so much. I really struggle to sleep even if I've had just one single drink. It can really impact my sleep. I've had entire sleepless nights where I've had to get up and go to work at 5 a.m. without having slept for like a minute just due to one drink of alcohol. If I have a hangover, it is so bad, it's unbearable, and my hangovers are coming from less and less and less amounts of alcohol. They're also hitting me way faster to where if I'm having drinks over the course of a night, if I start drinking too early in the evening, I'm finding myself getting hung over before I'm even leaving my social situation. And I think that's one of the reasons why my alcohol consumption was kind of growing for many years is because I would feel myself starting to like have this hangover kick in and in order to avoid that I would like do a shot or have another drink or have another glass of wine to help kind of like prolong my night but now that I'm drinking less and I'm just letting myself kind of feel those effects and not trying to push them off with more alcohol it's really helping me yeah just like drink less. 
My friends are also going through these phases of life where alcohol isn't really a thing. Um, a lot of my friends, like really, really close people to me have been pregnant or nursing over the last few years. And so that's really reduced their alcohol intake and therefore kind of mine as a byproduct as well. And yeah, my nights out might not be as like rowdy and fun and crazy as they maybe once were, but there's benefits to it. And I feel like I'm gonna appreciate myself in the long run for just toning things down a little bit at this point in my life. So yeah, that's definitely been a new experience for me this year. And I don't know if I could drink <laughs> much less next year than I've been drinking this year, like unless I stop drinking alcohol completely. So I do honestly feel like I've reached a really happy, good place in terms of my alcohol consumption. And yeah, I'm just gonna keep that up through the holiday season, which might be a little bit trickier considering how many libations will be around and how much I'll be tempted. <laughs> One of my kind of smaller, like silly goals for the year has been to focus on my hair health. I had been bleaching my hair for, I don't know, probably 10 years and in 2022 when i got married i was like the blondest that i have ever been and don't get me wrong i love having blonde hair and the girl who does my color is literally like world class honestly she's one of the best colorists in the world she's so amazing and i feel so lucky to have like been with her from this huge journey that she's on her name's alicia reed if you guys are in toronto she last year opened her own salon on the Danforth, which was such a big deal. It's kind of bad timing for me because it was around the same time that I decided to stop getting my hair colored, which means I haven't really been there as often to see her. But yeah, I had beautiful blonde hair and it was kind of a struggle for me to decide to kind of let go of it. But my hair health just got to the point where I felt like I really needed to or I was going to start losing my length. And the length is definitely the most important thing to me in terms of my hair. So I would say I have grown out probably like 40% of the bleach. I definitely still have a lot of bleach in my ends, which I quite like. I love having that little extra bit of dimension in my hair. But having my natural hair grow in and just really focusing on the hair products that I'm using and taking good care of it, using less heat, has been really effective. And my hair is just healthy and strong and I don't have any flyaways and the only broken bits are the bits with the bleach, you know? <laughs> like we're getting a lot stronger, a lot healthier and we're maintaining the length. I wasn't sure what, how far I was going to go with the brunette, but I think I'm going to actually try to grow out my entire natural hair color. I haven't seen my natural hair, like a full head of myself with natural hair, like ever. I started dyeing my hair when I was four years old. <laughs> I wanted to have red hair like the Little Mermaid, and my mom let me do that which I think is really cool, honestly, because like, it's just hair. <laughs> and uh, yeah, since then I've literally been dyeing my hair, whether that be like box dyes when I was in junior high, bleaching it to do like really bright colors. Like my hair's been every single color, pink, blue, green, orange, purple, red, black, brown, blonde, literally everything. But I haven't, yeah, seen myself with my natural hair color like ever. So yeah, since we're like getting so far along, you can kind of see the line where my natural hair grows and my bleach begins. I'm gonna just grow it out. I'm gonna continue to kind of just like slowly chop away at the ends until I have my full natural brown hair. I'll probably rock that for a little while just for fun. And then I'll definitely put some dimension back into it because I really love having some dimension in my hair. I think it looks really nice and really pretty and it's very flattering, but yeah, I'm so curious to see how it looks. <laughs> so yeah, hair health has definitely been a big check mark for me and something that I'll, of course, continue working on through the end of this year and into next year while I continue to grow everything out. I had some specific goals for my freelance business, one of which was to book 10 of my own weddings this year. I did not reach that number. I think I actually booked less of my own weddings this year than I did the year before. I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll need to double check, but I book weddings myself like 
through my own business and then I also work with a wedding company a bridal company and so majority of the weddings that I do come through that company and yeah I just want to slowly grow my own business over time and increase the number of weddings that I do that are my own like my own brides my own bookings and slowly decrease the amount of weddings that I'm taking from the booking company and yeah it's just a work in progress I did not reach my 10 weddings this year so I'll have to look at that and see what things I can change and do differently for next year that's not really something I can incorporate into my winter arc because weddings are booked so far in advance and so I likely won't book any more for the end of the year there also are way less bookings in the winter month so the chances of that are just very slim so that's something I can kind of say I didn't do for the year that I had wanted to do but can reevaluate when we come to 2025 and I can focus on other things during my winter arc rather than focusing on that. Something that I did complete when it comes to my freelance business is my rebrand with my new last name. So like I mentioned I got married in 2022 and I took my husband's last name and so everything in terms of my business was in my maiden name and it was kind of daunting having to change that over so I did a full rebrand on my social medias I also built myself an entirely new website when we were in Mexico City and I fully completed my new name rebrand in 2024 so I'm really happy about that and that's something that I can say that I accomplished this year I also had some specific goals with YouTube. I really wanted to stick to an upload schedule, which I would say for the most part I have definitely done. I was doing two uploads per week at the beginning of the year and then when we went into wedding season I switched that to one upload per week, but I was really consistent and for the most part uploaded when I said that I would upload. I wanted to get to 2,000 subscribers, so there's still five weeks to go. Um, I am currently at this exact moment 215 subscribers away from that number which I feel like is not impossible but also quite unlikely. On average I usually get between like 20 and 50 new subscribers every month depending on yeah how things are going with my channel so it's very unlikely for me to have a huge jump and get up to 215 but you never know. I'm hoping to put up some great videos for Vlogmas, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, I still have a little bit of time to focus on that. I'll incorporate that into my winter arc for sure. Uh, speaking of Vlogmas, really quickly, I did say in my last vlog that I would update you guys. My vlog camera broke, I sent it out for repairs, and I did get an email from them really quickly saying that it would be ready in 7 to 10 business days. So hopefully the vlog camera will be back to me by December 5th at the latest, which means that there may be a shortage of Vlogmas videos at the beginning of Vlogmas. Like I'm going to try and upload as many videos as I can with this camera and with my iPhone, but it's just, yeah, a little harder to do vlogs in order to make Vlogmas work. So yeah, hopefully the vlogs will be coming in fast and hard after December 5th, but that's the update on Vlogmas for now. I wanted to let you guys know that Merit is having a really exciting Black Friday sale. Merit products never go on sale, so I'm going to go in with a new blush that I got from them. This is in the color Cheeky. You guys know how much I love the Merit cream blushes. My favorite one is Stockholm, so here's the two side by side. You can see how much of Stockholm I've used. But Stockholm is just a little bit brighter, a little bit pinker, a little bit more of a pop. Whereas Cheeky is still a nice cool tone pink, but just a little bit darker, a little bit more purpley toned. If you're going to pick up anything from the Merit Black Friday sale, my number one recommendation would be their cream blushes. I love them. I have them in so many different colors. I've also given them as gifts and everyone I've given them to has loved them. So highly, highly recommend. Let's try out this new color. Merit works with so many influencers, but they don't ever give out discount codes. So a lot of brands, when they do promotions with influencers, will give them a code to give to their followers so their followers can get like five or 10 or 15% off of their purchases if they shop using their link or using their code. Merit never does that. And I literally have never seen them put their products on sale before. Apparently, 
they only do one sale per year and it's always at Black Friday. So the time is now if you have been thinking about getting married and you want to try something out, they're doing 20% off on the Merit website until December the 2nd. That is a beautiful color. So good for winter. Just a little bit darker, a little bit deeper than what I usually go for. It actually goes so perfectly with the Pillow Talk palette from Charlotte Tilbury. Like, wow, what a great combination. I love it. I love this color. You guys know I love so many of the Merit products. The, the stick foundation, some of the colors of their lipsticks are so amazing for every day. I also really love these shade slicks. I've actually used up an entire one and so I got another one um, in a new color. This is Maricino. Look how freaking beautiful that is. I'm so excited. I'm gonna use it today. But we're not quite at the lips yet. And then they also came out with a new fragrance. So I did already open this and smell it, but I wanted to show you guys the packaging because it's so beautiful. This is the first fragrance from Merit. Look at this beautiful box that it comes in. Such a nice color with the Merit embossing. Opens this way. And then you have your beautiful Look how stunning that is. Like literally the Merit packaging is just so incredible. So we can open this up and pull that out. I'll put the notes on the screen because I don't have them here with me, but it smells really sophisticated. Like if you think of Merit as a brand, it's really like clean and sophisticated and for like a grown up, you know, as opposed to some of the other brands that maybe market to younger people. And so if you're like in your 30s, I would say, or up and you want to smell like kind of sophisticated and like really grown, I feel like this would be a great fragrance for you. I really, really like it. It's if you're from Canada, this is like really niche, but when I first sprayed it and smelled it, the first thing that I thought of was it smells like the bay. And I don't know how to really explain that, except for like, yeah, it just smells like when you're, when you walk into the bay and you're on like the cosmetics floor and there's all the different perfumes and all of the different makeup and like all of the fresh new clothes, like this just smells exactly like that. <laughs> so really, really nice, so beautiful to sit on your wardrobe. And yeah, if you're into like, the notes that I put up on the screen and you want to smell like a classy lady, check this out. I'm actually going to go in with another Merit product here that I've been using every single day. This is the Day Glow Highlighting Balm. Uh, this is like the most <laughs> stunning, wet look, natural highlight ever. I love it. It's so easy to apply. Just dab it on with a brush and go and it stays like so dewy and glowy and beautiful for the entire day like oh my god look at that you guys i love it absolutely love it so back to my goals for the year <laughs> the last thing that i had kind of wanted to work on for youtube that i feel like ended up not really being as much of an issue this year was that i wanted to edit as i went so when i would film my week in the life vlogs i wouldn't edit them until it was like the day before i was going to be putting them up and then i would be frantically editing them and yeah just kind of like rushing through it and not being able to take my time and kind of play around with my editing and adding in little things that I wanted to add in and just really kind of like cutting my vlogs together as quickly as possible and it was kind of like a barrier in terms of creativity for me but this year because I was so much more organized in terms of what I was working on on what days of the week for the most part I was really ahead of my editing schedule and so I had so much more time to edit my vlogs than I ever have in the past. And so just due to the nature of being in my routine, I was able to kind of get out of that last minute editing habit. And so I didn't really have to focus on it as much or edit as I go. I was hoping to edit like a little bit every single day or edit what I had filmed for that day on the day that I filmed it. But I didn't end up having to do that just by the nature of having my schedule. So that worked out really nicely. Okay, I wanna try this Merit lip oil just by its own with that pink lip liner that I just put on just to see how it looks. So nice. This look is so monochromatic. Like I feel like the blush, the lip and the eyeshadow, they all go together so nicely. I love the texture of this. It's like a little bit oily, but not too much. It's hydrating. It's so easy to just like whip out and apply. So cute. So that's how it looks like on its own. It's giving like baby pink kind of feels. I'm sure that would change depending on the lip liner that you used, but yeah, so nice on its own. I am just going to add like, I think a little bit of a lipstick just 
because I feel like I want a little bit more color. I like adding a liquid lipstick on top of lip glosses. I feel like it is a nice way to have the longevity of a liquid lipstick but not have it be so drying on your lips. This is an old discontinued one from Charlotte Tilbury uh, called Charlotte Darling. The last goal that I had for myself for this year was to read 26 books and you know going into my winter arc I'm only one book behind. I've been up to three books behind at different points throughout the year and so I'm kind of like caught up for the most part. Um, but honestly over the last couple of weeks I've been thinking like why did I make this a goal and like why is the reading challenge even a thing? Books are all different lengths. I read an 800 page book this year and I've read like multiple 300 page books. So I could read three 300 page books or one 800 page book and like have read, you know, the same amount but a different number of books. So the reading challenge just like, I don't know, it doesn't really make a lot of sense when it comes to pages. And then also like, why are we like gamifying and like quantifying the number of books that we've read in the year like I just kind of feel like it takes a little bit of the enjoyment out of it I guess if you're wanting to get into reading and it's a way to like motivate yourself to get into the habit of reading maybe it would be good but I don't really need that I kind of love to read and always have so I don't know I'm kind of rethinking my <laughs> I'm kind of rethinking my quantifying of my reading. I probably won't do that again for next year. I'll still track the books that I've read, of course, because I love seeing what I've read over the years, but I don't know if I'll set myself a goal for the number of books that I've wanted to read for the year. But just in case anybody's wondering, because I have been tracking it for the year and updating you guys as I've been going, I'm currently at... 21 out of 26 books and I've actually fallen another book behind schedule so we're two books behind schedule but yeah that means I need to read like what the finish the book that I'm reading now and then read four more before the end of December that's very doable but if it happens it's just gonna happen because I've been enjoying reading not because I'm like desperately trying to finish my 26 books for the year so that's it you guys here is the finished makeup look and that was a little update on my 2024 goals and resolutions for the year i'm going to enter this winter arc i'll be at a little late because i think a lot of people started in october <laughs> but i'm gonna enter it now and just have like a really solid december focus on the things that i want to focus on to finish out this year and start 2025 strong I hope you enjoyed this little get ready with me. Don't forget to shop the Merit Black Friday sale, you guys. I love Merit. You really can't go wrong with majority of their products and they never do sales. So like now is the time. If you want other product recommendations from them, just search my name, Jessica Wallace and the word Merit on YouTube and like a bunch of videos will come up. And yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in a new video very soon. Bye guys.